Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you liked our little bit of Roscoe Flats and our real wish for you and for your children as we begin our webinar this evening. My name is Julie Ballier Bach. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Scholars Choice. I'm joined tonight with Megan Burgess Whiting. Uh, we uh, combined have 40 years experience in uh, early learning. It's a long time for both of us. I think we're both equally about 40 years, right, Megs? Yep. Uh, Megan joins us as a registered early um, uh, and a registered uh, ECE and educator for many years. She'd been a director. So she brings with her a wealth of experience. Also, Megan constantly is in and out of centers. Um, myself, I am actually just starting my capstone, uh, finishing off my master's in education in the field of early learning and also have been working with educators in and out of centers for the better part of 20 years. So we are going to share with you our expertise this evening and we are so very excited because the topic tonight is something that is so near and dear to us. Your child's um, social emotional health right now. And we know that it's a challenge for all of you. It's not just um, a challenge for parents but equally for our children. And I'm going to share a little story with you. I have two colleagues, one that's in um, Taiwan and one that's in South Korea. Both of them educators working in uh, the field. Um, both of them actually in elementary school. And they were sharing with, with me that when they first started quarantine, the first three weeks, everyone was about workbooks and, and having to have their children and working on improving their, their, their skills, uh, that they were losing time from their classroom, right? Meeks, like I know Meeks and I have talked about this. And, and what they found is that by about week three, the children started to get quite sad and a little bit distance. And uh, we'll talk about some of the other behaviors that they saw and that we are seeing now and we're hearing from parents and that, you know, as a grandma, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing. And uh, Megan, you have two children at home with you right now. Yep. And it's starting to wear on them, isn't it? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to come together tonight as a community. We're really not saying we have all the answers, not saying what I'm saying is right. But what I am telling you is that Scholar's Choice is a company with purpose. And our purpose tonight is to support you as a community and open the conversation. Uh, and Megan has a few uh, housekeeping rules, Meeks, that yep. I know that you want to go over this evening. Yep. So um, you're going to get a certificate night for watching um it's in order to get the certificate though because it's automatically generated you just have to be on the webinar for 45 minutes um and then it will be sent out to you and if you don't see it in your inbox if you could just check your spam box and just make sure that it didn't go in there um but it automatically generates and so it goes to the people that have been on for 45 minutes or longer so you just need to stay on um, if you would like the certificate. Um, and then for questions, if you guys have questions that you'd like us to answer at the end, if you can just click on the chat button and then down at the bottom in the left hand corner, if you click on it, just put um, send to admin only and then we'll filter through those questions and we'll get to them. So just send it to admin only and not to everybody and then we can go through those questions. Okay. Is that pretty much it, Meeks? Yeah. Okay. Good. Perfect. Perfect. So let's start off with some goals for this evening and uh, just to sort of frame our conversation tonight. And we want to make sure that, that our goal is that we have playful children, children who um, we all celebrate play and uh, want to um, encourage them to continue uh, to be playful. One is that our children feel safe. And three is that our children have something to look forward to. We all need that. You need it. I need it. Um, you know, we all need that. And so those are three goals that we that we want to address this evening. Now, I'm going to share with you a slide. And so I'm going to uh, bring it up on my screen. I um, if I have technical difficulties, I, I apologize. As you might see, I'm working at home. You can see my little bunny uh, in the back. Isn't he beautiful? Uh, he is a one of a kind, a gift from uh, Scott and Cindy Webster, uh, the owners of Scholar's Choice. And I, I brought him home from my office so that it felt more like uh, more like home. So um, anyways, I'm going to um, share with you my screen. And Meeks, can you see it? Yeah, you're good. So I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about times are challenging. They're challenging for parents and for children. So let's together begin this conversation. 
begin the conversation that how we might change the outcome of our time in quarantine. Being at home with your children is hard. It's trying. Uh, you are trying to work, perhaps. Uh, you're trying to have your full-time job as, as well as a look after your children with little to no support to do that. Um, have you yelled? Have you been trying to be their teacher and homeschool them as well as their parent? Um, and as well as, at the same time, uh, working on, on your job? Have you been punishing your children for childlike behaviors? Have you cried? Maybe maybe in, in private or, or maybe right in front of everyone and both are totally understandable. Um, have you made your children cry? And have you wanted to just escape? Have you just thought, I just want to wake up tomorrow and this all be over and my life go back to the way it was? These are all very common comments that we hear from moms and dads and, and uh, caregivers everywhere. But what I can tell you is, you can't go back and change the beginning. But you can start where you are and change the ending. And this is a quote that I got from C.S. Lewis. And I thought it was so appropriate for this evening. As we begin to think about where we are and where we want to go to. And that we begin to realize, as, as many of you have gotten calls this week uh, from your uh, children's teachers in elementary school, from their teachers in high school. Uh, I know my son, uh, Michael, is an elementary school teacher, uh, grade five, uh, and he is reaching out to all of his families. I know that um, it's very exciting. Uh, my grandson, Brayden, and uh, my granddaughter, Poppy, both in uh, one in um, a Jardin, one in SK, are both got calls from their teachers. So I think we can all just sort of breathe in and breathe out because um, our teachers are going to be back uh, supporting our children in their learning. And I think that that's going to be a huge uh, help for us. And I hope that we all share that. And if what you have um, is little ones at home, um, here's, here's my message for you. Stop <clears throat> trying uh, to teach them. Uh, the most important thing that a young child or preschooler can do is play. Play is the work of a child. Marie Montessori shared that with us. I need you to, to sort of breathe that in and, and try and understand that this is how your child um, learns, is through play. And so we're going to talk a lot about a lot of ideas for you to incorporate that. Uh, for older children and younger children, we're going to go through that with you. Julie, okay. sorry, can I just interrupt for you? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. So if people are having issues and their screen is freezing, if you guys just refresh it, you should be good to go. Okay. Just if anyone's having issues and their screen's freezing, just refresh and come back to us. <laughs> we have, we have, I just got noticed over 800 people online with us. So if, if we have technical difficulties, we apologize. This is Means that's at home. I'm at home. Steve that works for us doing an awesome job managing all of this from his home. So we're all trying the best we can to make this technology work. And um, we are we have a lot of people with us. So um, uh, I think that um, I think that we can all just, you know, row in this boat together tonight. So when we think about young children, and we think about what they need to do is play. Let's just let the rest of the conversation uh, flow on. I just wanted to give us a little bit of um, a framework for how, how as educators, um, we believe that the young child learns, and that is through play. And uh, Scholar's Choice has embraced a great uh, uh, playful learning approach. And we'll send that to you tomorrow. And tonight we're gonna to talk about one of the elements, which is the playful learning approach, which is really, involving loose parts and we're going to talk about how to implement that in your home but we're also going to talk about and most importantly is the is that the social distancing our children are experiencing is causing um, them to have uh, challenges um, we could be seeing behavioral challenges correct makes yeah um, what else might we be seeing from our children as we are having children demonstrate to us so they're acting out, they're frustrated, they're angry, they're sad. They just want to go to school and see their friends and be with their teacher. They don't understand what's happening. And it's important as parents, we understand that they love these people. They love their teachers. 
you know, as educators, you'll see children run to us and tell us that they love us, hug us, and and they want us to know because we want them to know. You know, here I'm going to share with you a little song, and and I'm going to share, um, and well, I'll share with you a little bit later. But um, children are missing their teachers, they're missing their friends, and they're missing their routine. So how do we talk to young children and even our older children? about how to um, how to deal with that. Like Denise is sharing that there's outbursts of anger and she's probably not sure where it's coming from. Um, you know, she's simply asking for something simple to be done perhaps or a request and it's just too much. They just, they can't burden and carry anymore. As parents, you're missing your routine. Perhaps you're working from home and that's strange. And I, I'm gonna, uh, I told my, my daughter before we started to forgive me, but that I was throwing her under the bus tonight, wasn't I, Megan? I, yep. Uh, of Lauren, and uh, she has two little boys. One is six and one is uh, two. And uh, she was on a conference call last week and she actually called me in tears. Um, she said, it was awful. Um, I thought that I would use this time to train Jackson, toilet train, and went great. Okay, that was great the first few days, but now he takes his clothes off. She was on a conference call, and he goes running by, climbs on her, and he's totally naked. And he's jumping all over the place, totally naked in front of all these people. She was mortified. And I think that these are the stories that we're hearing from moms. Uh, perhaps, perhaps not Lauren so much the naked part, but... but um, but you know, we're hearing stories from mom that's that they are feeling embarrassed. And but the good part of that is Lauren's colleagues responded by saying, you know what, Lauren, the highlight of our day is to see what the heck your children do um, while we're on our conference call because it's entertaining. And I think that as a community, a lot of us are rallying together that way. Do you find that makes? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? We're all in this together. It's something new for everybody, and we're all trying to adapt to the new norm. With that That's new norm. Right, the new norm. And you know, we hear lots of things about how long that could go. And I'm not going to share any time frames because I am by no means an expert on defining those. But you know, we also are missing our personal time. How many of us are used to spending more than a pro at the most three hours a day with our children? And now we're spending 12 hours a day. With our older children, we might be spending upwards of 14 hours a day. How many of us are used to that? How many of our children are used to that from us? You know, it's very, um, it's very challenging for all of us. You're feeling as a parent, your life is out of control. All the things that you had planned in your life, how you manage your life are no longer, are no longer um, coming to fruition, are they? The, the, you know, Tuesdays we do this, Wednesdays we do this, Thursdays we do this. Heck, we're even having a hard time deciding what we're going to eat because we might not be able to get what we thought at the grocery store or we might not be able to get um, what we were planning on for dinner. Our house is now a play yard. You know, we're going to show some pictures later. And um, being your child's teacher is probably not your chosen career. So I frame those things for you to, so that we can all sort of be on the same page and, and understand that if you're feeling these things, everyone is feeling these things. Everyone is feeling isolated, discombobulated. Um, and so, and now pretend that you're four or you're seven and you're used to running and jumping and playing and, and, and with your friends and all of a sudden, you have um, no one and you're looking at your parents thinking you're not as exciting as I really want you to be. Um, and so we're going to talk about uh, some of those things. And uh, so I share, I'm going to share this screen with you because I think that this is what some of us are beginning to feel like our, um, our common areas in our home. So what used to be a, a living room perhaps now is a quiet space. Um, what used to be a dining room are now some separate areas. And, and I want to ponder on this one for a moment, because I think for some of us, we need to relinquish some control of what our houses used to be like and begin to embrace that these are possibilities for the new norm. Create a fork for your children. Put pillows and books in there. Allow them time to get away from you quietly is very important. We're going to talk a lot more about some loud activities, too.
But look how this ingenious person just took this, either a sheet or, or a tablecloth and just tied it around a table and created swings for their children. I don't know, the, the magic for this for me was that she separated the children. I thought, wow, there is a mother who's been around the block a few times. She knew that two was required, one would never do. So um, I think it's time for us to think about that. Meeks, what are some other ideas that we could think about that we might be able to do in our homes to create space for children that um, allow them to feel a little bit more like it did at school? You know, you could set up a little area for them where a desk is for them, an area that they can kind of feel like that they, you know, our older children's like JK and up, that they have an area that they could go in and check into every day like they did for school trying to keep it somewhat normal, some kind of normal routine for them, um, still get them up as if they're going to school and make that area in the house where they have that area. And if your time allows, giving that time to go outside and play in the backyard with themselves during, you know, their recess time, make that their recess time. So trying to keep a little bit of structure for them if your child is used to that structure and routine, I think those are great points. I think that some people had some magnificent ideas here in the chat um, about being outside and, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about, about that as we go. Um, I think that for many of us, we never had time, um, so much time with our children. And so thinking about other things that we might be able to do with, with our children that I'm sure that many of you are doing, but what would be some things that we could do with our kids at home as a family. Oh, you are you asking? Sorry, yes, asking me? sorry oh, yes, okay. I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, so some of the things we can do is we can do puzzles together. We can do games. We can do craft activities. We can even incorporate cooking and baking. Doing something like that with them, kind of trying to step out because I think we have to instead of always trying to be that teacher part and do the academics, try and add some fun into that daily routine with them. I think that even thinking about baking, how might we think about baking as working with loose parts and that it be creative? Uh, flour is loose parts, sugar is loose parts as they measure and pour. These are all opportunities for learning and discovery-based learning. You don't have to say, well, this is a quarter of a cup and this is a half a cup. Um, you know, and that they're they're actually understanding the, the measurement quantities as much as they're understanding that it's one of these fits two of these and that we pour them in here and then we mix and we blend. And these are activities that children have been experiencing if they go to centers. So they're familiar with them. They have sensory bins. And this is all part of sensory play. That they're very familiar with. And now you're introducing this in a way that is going to make them feel um, uh, more at home. And Mies, on that note, how else might we talk about sensory play um, in our homes? So you could do sensory play, you could do like a water, just get them a little bin with water, with different measuring cups. You could, and in there, you could start talking about different math things, you know, like Julie was saying with the measuring cups and that, you could add color. You know, if I add this color to it, what color do you think we could get? So you could start using that. Um, you could do Play-Doh, you could make slime, you could do uh, finger painting, stuff that they can put outside and put on their windows. I know lots of things are happening in the community, people putting rainbows and different things up. So you could do a sensory thing and put that out for the children. And I think that when we're playing games with our children, I just wanted to interject here. When you go and you play games with adults, how many times do they stop the game to ensure that you're learning uh, a particular skill at that moment? I think it's important when we're playing as a family that as long as we all agree on the rules, it's fine. Doesn't matter what you need to do to adapt as long as everyone at the table is game. So, you know, we often as children, I might have the youngest child as my partner. My husband might have had one of the second youngest children. I had four children and that's fine. It doesn't matter as long as we're all in agreement. It doesn't have to be perfect and by the rules on the box. And I know for some of you that's hard and, and us type A's is hard because we know exactly how the game should be played. But we need to learn to let these go in particular in these times because we want our children 
to relax, to decompress, to be able to feel it's a safe place. When we're on them all day about so many small things, it becomes burdensome for them on top of the fact they're not seeing their friends. They're not seeing their teachers. They're not able to express themselves in the way that they normally would have. So these are um, these are challenges for children. So let's talk about how we might be able to handle some of the challenges when our children are wishing for things, Megan. I wish I could go to the park because if you're in a large city in Canada right now, your children, the parks are closed. So if you're in a community where the parks are open and you can still go there, um, you're fortunate because children can't go to parks in, in Toronto. I know by my son, um, no, we just have a, you know, our, our, our granddaughter, George in Toronto, she's just one, but the parks are closed so they can go outside and walk. Now they have a little backyard. They're very fortunate, but, um, many people have no green space at all to go to now. So, um, so my, makes, what are some things that we could do? What are some things? Uh -huh. So you, if you have access to your backyard, you know what? You could set something up the night before and create something exciting for them outside. Um, you could set up different, you know, gross motor activities in your backyard to do. And you don't have to have a lot of stuff, but you could set out empty bins and set up an obstacle course that they have to jump over the bins. Um, you could set up a scavenger hunt outside for them. Um, so I think being able to get outside and doing that, if you have a driveway, you could do like... Um, a hopscotch or tic-tac-toe or do some kind of game like that with them outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we're going to show some pictures in just a minute. So what about a grateful jar? What about a wish jar? I saw this posted by someone. I thought it was brilliant. So what happens is we have a jar and a pad of paper and everything that we wish that we could do. We wish we could go visit our grandmother. We write it down and we fold it up and we put it in the jar. And we commit as a family that when we're finished this, we are going to go through our wish jar and we are going to do everything that's in our wish jar. So we might say we wish we could go to the park. We might say we wish we could go to visit our friends. The wishes, you will be surprised how simple your children's wishes are. Because, uh, and but when you, when you ha open this conversation up with your children, it allows them to really express to you what it is they're missing. And that you can then see if you are able to um, fill those voids in a different way. We're going to talk a little bit about um, social distancing and how we might close that gap in, in just a, a very few minutes. But think about that because this sometimes it's hard for children to, um, to express to you how they're feeling, right? You know, Meeks, when they're little, you might see it in an outbreak. Yeah. So when a child is very upset for me, this is, this is a technique that I find works very well for me as I get down really close, really close. And when I talk to children, I always bend down to their level and look at them in the eyes. And I say, can you look at me in my eyes? And sometimes they're resistant and then they come around and they look at me in the eyes and I say to them, do you need help or do you need a hug? You're, tr you're giving the child the power to make a decision about their own emotions instead of me saying, stop crying now. Well, I had a very unfortunate circumstance this week uh, for myself. I lost my sister. And had someone just walked over to me and said, stop crying now. Um, not so sure I would have been able to, and not so sure I would have felt um, uh, loved and supported. Um, but has someone said to me, you know, do you need help or do you need a hug? And I think it would have, uh, I probably would have been going for the hug a lot, uh, but with social distancing, um, I might have just, I might have just said, I, I just need some help. So I, I share with that with you on a personal note as well. Children need to be heard, and they often act out to us because they feel unheard. So let's talk a little bit about what we could do. So let's say we put all of these wishes in, and we take a look at them, and we see that what they're, they, so many times they say, I want to see Julie, I want to see Megan, I want to see, I want to see, and we have this jar full of, I want to see my friends. What can we do together, Megs? What are some things that we could do to help our children see their friends in this social distancing challenge that we have right now so you could use zoom skype facetime so those are some ways to visually see 
Um, some of the other things that you could do is write your friend a letter and go actually put it in the mailbox for them. Could you imagine writing a letter, right? And then, you know, you might have, you'll have to take precautions because let's, let's be honest, we all know the world we live in right now. Um, but, but even just drawing a picture um, keeping it in the length of time that, that we feel would be safe and then delivering it to them. Or what about doing something for our neighbors? What about if we feel that writing a note might be a little bit of a challenge? What if we went to their driveway and with chalk wrote, we miss you. And then the child wrote a big happy face in their name. What if in front of our friend's house, we drew a chalk, a hot chalk, a hot scotch, sorry, couldn't get that out, um, for them to, um, to play with when they came out. Wouldn't you just feel so great? And we could share that with our communities. Um, so many moms and dads have these community groups. I know my daughter-in-law, Stephanie, she's a tremendous community uh, with, the, with the women at the school. And they're always talking back and forth. And, and uh, could you imagine if you could you know, say to them, listen, we're gonna be doing something. Make sure we're gonna be coming in the morning early and we're gonna write something on the sidewalk for your child. And then the child could say, come on out and call them and say, you gotta go outside, I left something for you. That would be such a connection. And, and the other thing actually that was shared with me, um, my uh, granddaughter Poppy has been quite sad. And um, so what her mom did was she arranged, a, 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 I'll say Skype, a meeting for the two with her a little friend that uh, they play with all the time. And they just played. Like she said, it was just like they were in the same room. One of the things as parents that we don't have is the same imagination as a child, right? Me, it's like, it's, yep. it's amazing. Yep. So I was talking to my friend who was one of my colleagues who is in South Korea. And um, so they have, she teaches, a, a, I'll say JKK program, the age of children four or five. And so every Friday she has a get together and it's called bring a toy. And with her classroom, all the children bring a toy and they just play with each other. She said, we just open up space in people's homes. The most they can move a coffee table or whatever. And last week she was saying a little boy bought a, brought a doctor's kit. And he went around to everybody and he'd say, Megan, come here. I have to check you now. He'd say, oh, you're healthy. You get to go. And then, you know, Susie, you're not healthy. You need to lie down. And the children had a blast all playing, um, you know, going to the hospital, all on virtual um, play. You know, the children aren't going to sit down like you and I are talking, but they're going to... Um, be able to play. You will be astounded if you give them uh, the space to just play. This is what our children are missing, is the opportunity to simply play. So um, also, I know that right now, I, I talk to my grandchildren via um, Skype pretty much every day. Um, it's really nice and, and we're learning. Uh, to find a new way to connect. And so um, some of the things I'm going to share with you, uh, little songs, because some of you might not be able to see your um, nieces and nephews or children that you're very close to. You might be an educator. So uh, this is a little song that um, was taught to me. Uh, Migs and I went to Glasgow a couple years ago with Cindy Webster and um, uh, Alice Sharp, she was on actually she's going to be on our educators webinar next tuesday i'm telling you it's worth all of you to tune in it's going to be phenomenal she is she is so high energy you will just leave it just energized just for listening to her for the hour but anyways i digress so here i go twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder how you are eyes so bright and cheeks so sweet talented from your head to feet Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Grandma wants you to know how loved you are. So it's a song that allows us to connect to children. Many of our children have been in situations, for example, a nursery or childcare, where song is a big part of their life. And so when I start to sing, it's amazing how the, they come closer to the screen and they want to hear. So, you know, share that with your own children. Share it with um, children that you're talking to. So we talked about creating cards. We talked about creating wishes for the future in our jars. Um, 
what about posting pictures on the windows? Means you share this idea with me. Yep. And yeah, so I know there's lots of different ones going around in the community, but um, let, allowing your children to draw on their window or draw a picture and just tape it to the window. Um, I know we've been going for lots of walks and just seeing them all out in the community. It you know what? It just brings a smile to your face because everybody's feeling the same thing. And you just walk by and you see these all these beautiful pictures that children have drawn. And it's it's really inspirational. It is. And, yeah. you know, you could you could go and you could collect them. And then when you go back on Skype, you could say, I saw your beautiful picture. I love it. Then the other child could say, I saw your picture and you drew that for me. And that's so special. Children love to be able to connect with each other. And this is the part they're missing. And this is the part as adults that we have to find for them. Because when we find that connection for them, what we're going to discover is a lot of the behavioral issues that we're struggling with at home are also going to be more manageable. They're not going to go away, guys. This is unprecedented for, for families to live like this. Um, so, Julie, can I just say one thing? Sorry. Oh, yes. And if yeah. you guys actually follow us on our social media, um, on Instagram and on Facebook, um, you can see that we've posted a lot of this stuff and we've posted different pictures and that. So um, have a look over there. Um, Emily's done a great job of posting different things. Oh, such an amazing job. Yeah. And at the end, I'm going to show you what else she's done, which is put together a tremendous amount of free resources for you. She's yeah. gone over and above. So this girl's working day and night right now. To support you and um so i, I just want to we're going to send you the link at the very end i'm going to share it with you so that you can have it and click on it um we're going to send you just i see some people asking for things we're going to send you a a small deck of what we talked about today so that you can uh, you can have time to digest it and sit with it as well so um another another idea is as we're starting to go into harvest our harvest season planting season thank planting a garden think about perhaps having your children plant different plants for their friends and they'll tend to those plants they can show them to their friends you could take pictures and send them to their friends um, these would all be great ideas for connection too and then when when this is over they could take the plants to their friends or plant them and share the harvest in in, in August however that works for you by also taking pictures of things your children did and say, would you like to share that with your friends? So perhaps maybe they did, they made a great fort or they uh, did something great outside or they did a beautiful picture uh, with their uh, chalk. Whatever it is that they did, what about sharing those with friends too and family so people can share together and get excited about, um, about what's happening. And I just wanted to, sorry, share one thing, Julie. So um, I have a 10 year old boy and he's really struggling with not being, he loves school. He loves being with his friends. So last week, actually, he woke up and he said, you know what I'm going to do, mommy? He said, every day I'm going to write something new and special, how I had to learn and do something new and special. And he's actually keeping a little journal and he got a binder and he's drawing a picture and then writing something about it and then he keeps it in it and i said you know what Calum? that's a great idea because it's it's something that he'll have to share and he'll always have that to look back on something how he's had to adapt to do something new every day i love that means we'll make sure that we put that in our notes i love it Calum, mm -hmm. also megan's friend sends me videos of what he's doing um because he because i just think children are just magnificent I'm, every day and um they really are our, our truest our greatest gift of all and, and you know what if, if you don't if you know i understand some people don't have access to you know the internet and different things like that even if just leaving a um a message over the phone for them you know what even letting children talk and just putting it on speakerphone they may not be able to see each other you'll be amazed at how well they interact like julie said they're just going to go on and play and you know they'll just talk mm -hmm. to each other so if you don't have, you know, if you don't oh, have access to that. And in light of this, I want to tell you, so I went on last night and I set up a free Zoom account and Zoom is now allowing, I guess if before you had to pay money for it to be more than half an hour, but now they're giving everyone extended time because of the situation people are in. So we did that last night. My uh, my older children, my children are, are not little, they're, they're all adults. And they got together um, just to uh, support each other and um have a have a time to um to hang out because um 
you know, they just don't get to see each other. I, I want to talk a little bit also, and one of the things that I think really helps children is um, water play. So whether that be water play in your bathtub or water play outside, water play in the kitchen sink, but children, part of how children learn is through sensory play. We have five doors to our brains and those are our senses. And that's how we all, you, you are taking in information from me by hearing right now, by seeing. Um, they're the only doors into our brains. So when children have sensory experiences on top of hearing or seeing, it, it, the more senses that are engaged, the, uh, the higher chance of children retaining that information and absorbing it. So I think that it's one of the things that as the weather's getting nice, I know Meeks and I were talking about this earlier, weren't we, Meeks? Yep. Um, that what are some ideas that parents could do outside to incorporate water play? Because water is also very soothing. We all hear about how being in water is soothing. So we felt that that would also be something that would help children to calm them and to help with their social emotional um, condition right now. Mm -hmm. So what else could they do outside Meigs? With their sensory play so you could just have a bucket of water you could give them some soil and let them add that into it give them some utensils like your spoons from inside um bowls um you could add food coloring to it maybe allow them to add soap and see what happens when you add soap to it um so, those so are and, and and also i'm going to share our screen now i've got a list here of what are loose parts and loose parts are amazing for children to play with it. And we're going to do another session on our educators platform on loose parts in a few weeks. But, but this is a list of um, what are loose parts? Straws, clothes pegs, rulers, wood, cork, straw, pegboard, wire, flashlights, LED lights. Now, some of these are not appropriate for all ages, and you'll have to go through that. But pine cones and an air pump, popsicle sticks, magnets, glass and plastic lenses. These are all loose parts. And as I said, we'll send this to you. But these are also things that children could incorporate into their water play. And it doesn't have to always have water in it. It could just be loose parts play. But when you introduce children to loose parts play, it allows their imagination to soar. And when their imagination gets on fire, it, it, it engulfs them into what they're doing. It, get, it develops their imagination and they'll spend tremendous amount of time playing with this. But if you say to a child, here's a firehouse and here are three fire trucks and three firemen and we can't have any mess and this is what you need to play with, and they're gonna be standing on that firehouse within three minutes. Reeves, is that what's gonna happen? Do you agree? Yes. And any educators that are on the uh, call with us, you're going to know that the same thing is going to happen. They are going to have um, very, very limited uh, attention span. Because so many of you are on and they'll say things like, um, you know, oh, uh, we like our house to be tidy. And I'm just going to tell you that's just not going to be a reality right now. Uh, you've got little ones in your house and uh, they need to be able to explore. And the more loose parts you can give them, and this can just be in a container of mixed loose parts, what they will create and what they will explain to you about what they did will astound and amaze you. It is unbelievable and it will never be the same twice. So you will give them the exact same group the next day and you'll say, oh, mm, yeah, Julie said this is gonna entertain them twice. <laughs> Shocked, won't they, Meese? Yeah. It will just it will in, just envelop their imagination and um, they will be busy for a very long time. And, um, you know, this is what um, it is about now. Um, so these are some simple things we're suggesting here to you, because what we know is that our children need um, some, to be able to explore now. Let's talk about a few more things that could get really fun. So could you imagine if in the evening you guys all had. Can you hear my song, Meese? I'll turn it up a little bit.
I hope you can hear, you think I'm dancing to nothing. But, but what I'm going to tell you is, when we give our children an opportunity to, fit, to hear the 60s music, to watch you dance, and maybe you're not quite as old as I am, um, but, um, and, and I only know this because my sisters were much older than me, but, um, you know, when we give our children dance parties, here's what I know, here's what I know, is that whenever I sing and dance, everybody's happy. Happy when I'm in a center and happy when I'm home with my grandchildren. When things start to get wild and I start seeing kids jumping on sofas or flying off the coffee table onto the sofa, I think, oh, it's time for a dance party. And I clear off the coffee table and I put on music and we all show what we've got. And, you know, the reality of it is they don't care how you dance. And if you have older children, they're going to laugh and think you're hilarious. And um, it's okay. Just tell them this is how we danced. And um, they can show you how they dance and they can share some music with you that is more current to them and that they love. But have a dance party. Have a dance party every night. Develop. One of you were saying uh, that your daughter is learning to um, uh, play the guitar. Uh, fabulous, fabulous. To share with with her, her love of music, then think about what songs is, are inspiring her and then play them and dance. Guys, this is the time to get to know your children. This is an experience that many parents will never, ever, ever have ever again. Please look, try and find the golden nugget here, which is, you know, someday your children will look back on this and you'll tell them about the challenges and you'll tell them about how hard it was. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say these words. What I remembered is that we were together and I loved the dance parties. And I remembered the long walks and the coloring on the sidewalks. And that's what they're going to remember. And they're not going to remember the rest because this is a time for you to be with them. And they will remember this if we follow C.S. Lewis's, you know, so you know, interesting words for us at the beginning of this presentation where he said to us, you know, we we can't go back and change the beginning of, of how these first three weeks have gone. And maybe some of you have done an amazing job and, and it's just fabulous and, and, you know, good for you. Uh, I, I think that's amazing. Some of us have struggled and now it's time to sort of, you can't go back to the beginning and change anything, but but you can start where you are and change the ending. And I challenge all of us to change the ending so that in 10 years, our children are going to say, this was some of the most magnificent times of my childhood because we were together. And I think that if we allow our children to express themselves through the wish book jar, and, and you may have 10 other magnificent ideas, and I hope you share them and, and we can put them all down, um, you know, in our, our, our report back to you. Um, you know, in a few days, and then you can um, go about trying to fill those voids for them, whether it be on Zoom, whether it be on the phone, even just a speakerphone, as, as Meg suggested, whether it be trying to emulate some of the things that they had in school, like a desk, a chair, their recess time, they might all think that's really funny. You might have a little bell that goes off and say, okay, everybody gets a break. But it's, uh, it's very important that we hear our children and we watch and we see and take the time to ask them, do they need a hug or do they need help in the frustrating moments? And I think that it will be amazing. Your children will know you at the end of this time. What a gift for you to know your children and then for them to know you. We are going to have to very much uh, let things go that we perhaps might not have let go before, like a tidy or home or perhaps things being done on routine. But I think, I think it's going to be okay. Um, I think that it's going to be, um, I think that we're all going to be good and we're all going to come out of this together and we're going to be stronger for it. And we're going to have found the true meaning of what it is to be a family. And I think that that is the gift. That is the gift that um, 
the, the golden nugget that's going to be at the bottom of our isolation and uh, quarantine. Um, Beeks, it is quarter two, and I know that we had some Q&A. Okay. Um, I just wanted to finish off a few things that we talked about, just to make sure I, I do them. Um, perhaps might, you might even encourage your children to do plays, practice plays, and uh, put them on for their friends. Children love to do puppet theater. Use a sock. It doesn't even matter if it doesn't have a face. They don't care. They just like just put their little hands in it and I wish I had a sock here to show you and I don't. So, um, sorry, but um, that's a great idea. Allow them to put on plays. Let them put on plays for you. Let them show you their ballet routine or their dance routine or how they throw a football or how they kick a soccer ball. Allow them to display for you um, their greatest achievements. Play games together and, and, and be full of, of the joy of the moment. Don't get so caught up in the rules. Puzzles, my gosh, it is amazing. We have done 1,000 piece puzzle. We're now doing this Mickey Mouse shape puzzle that is, honest to God, I, I, some days I think it just was meant to be torture because it's so hard. But it is a lot of fun and we laugh a lot about it. Um, we are going to conquer this puzzle. We know that together we are. Um, charades, I love charades and young children love charades. Make the words simple. Make them easy. Allow them to be um, successful at them. You know the words. You made them up and put them in the jar. You know, support them at the beginning. They might not be great. Show them the different techniques on how to how to say things. Uh, you know the words, so you can be liberal with your guesses. Go for walks, as Megan said about um, you know perhaps maybe work with people in your community. Think again about the chalk on and writing stories or writing um, salutations. Go to your neighbors that are older and write messages on their driveway or on the sidewalk outside their home with chalk so that when they come outside, you know that they're thinking about you. Hopscotch, make a hopscotch. You could make a huge one. Make an outdoor tic-tac-toe that the children could play with. Perhaps make a huge, huge, huge snakes and ladders. Could you imagine make a huge snakes and ladders and all you need to do is create a out of a cardboard box, a dice and roll it and they can uh, play uh, human sized um, snakes and ladders. That would be really fun. Go outside with science, make a volcano with your children, explore how these things are done. When you see our live resources at the, at the end, um, our free resources, there's so much there for you to explore and have fun with your children. And I see that you guys have a just your ideas are amazing and outstanding um, that are here with us. So um, I hope that we covered off a ton. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is a singing. Sing to your children. Find out nursery rhymes. I went on ahead of time. And, you know, you can say, ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. One, four. And then you could say the neighbor. You could say the friend that they're missing. One for Susie and one for Bob. One for little. And then, of course, their name because children, they just love that when you say their name. They just be, you know, one for little Henry who lives down the lane. You know, these things are so nice for children. Don't ever miss out on reading your children's stories at night. You have the time now. Sometimes we don't, even though our best intentions are. And my last word of advice is don't ever miss that last kiss goodnight. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope that uh, tonight had some good ideas and that your, um, that your thinking and starting the conversation about how your children are feeling and noticing it and thinking about what you can do to connect them with their loved ones, their teachers, their family, and their friends. So thank you. Now Meeks, we have some questions. Yeah, did you wanna, should we, um, do you wanna do the offers now? Oh yes, of course, certainly I do. Okay. Um, so these are some offers that we have. First, I want to show you the free downloads. So here's the offer. I'm publishing it. Um, Emily's been on tonight. So she is a 
fabulous resource for us. If you go onto Facebook and leave us a message, she it's incredible how fast she, she responds. And um, she is there actually right now responding to all kinds of, of, of your questions. And so there's free downloads. Um, there's so many you will just be shocked at how much. There's also free workbooks from Scholar's Choice that we have published. All of our check and double check are up there free for you. So um, I hope all of you have clicked that. I'm going to remove it uh, because I do want to share with you one other um, offer right now before we go, because I know many of you in, um, are, are really uh, feeling that you want to be able to support your children with learning. And so what we did was we went out to Chalkboard, which is a Canadian publisher, Dimitri. She's going to be on in, in I think it's two weeks, her and I are, are going to be back on talking uh, with to you about working with your children at home and how to how how that works like how to make that work and she's amazing guys amazing uh, so she has 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 chimed back into me just I, I think minutes before the webinar started how excited she was to be on and her company's called um, chalkboard and let me just I'm going to uh, remove the offer for a moment and then I'm going to show you her package and so I really at Scholars, we really felt that this was a, a, a great option. So what you get is by the year, the grade, you get six workbooks, you get a um, a guide from her on how to work with your children. You can email them and get free help online. And there's one more thing that I'm not saying, sorry. 12 weeks of learning from K to six. So you buy by the grade. So you either buy grade six, grade you know, K, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it includes uh, the ebooks, it includes a home guide, and it includes an email address to talk to them about um, sorry, I think that went wrong. This. Did I do it now, right, Meeks? Yep, it's there now. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that, guys. So we shared that because we've had so many people reach out to us and are struggling working with their children, especially people who normally went, to, who, whose children went to tutors or just want to augment what's going on. Um, I mean, we all know it's challenging. It's going to be challenging for our teachers. Um, but if you wanted to do something, that's available for you. And as I said, Dimitri is going to be on in two weeks. And she's actually on now, Julie. She's on the webinar listening. Oh my goodness. Hi, Dimitri. Oh, I'm so glad that you were able to join us. And um, so uh, she's watching tonight. And so that shows you her dedication and uh, her commitment to our community. So thanks so much for joining us, Dimitri. I hope I did. I hope I did a good, uh, a, 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 you know, fair presentation for uh, that material. So Meeks, let's talk about our questions. Yeah, so we've got tons, so we'll go through a few of them, and then what we can do is we'll answer them and then send them out to people. Okay. Is that good? Okay, so a lot of them, you know, are revolving around this. So their children are worried that they're not going to see their friends again. I and know. people are wondering how to respond to that. You know, and we're seeing children lose sleep, wake up in the middle of the night, and we talked about the other behavioral problems also. I think that the things that we talked about is – Going, going past their houses and leaving them a message, perhaps. Um, you know, if you have to drive there and leave a message in chalk on their front porch so that they can look up. If you could call ahead and tell them, perhaps the child in the house could leave a message for you or be at the window waving and they could wave at each other and know that they're okay. This is what children don't. You and I can pick up the phone and talk, but when you're little, you can't. And and um, they don't always know and comprehend everything that's going on. So that would be a great idea. The Zoom meetings, now that it's free to do that. Uh, if you've got a smart TV and you can put it up on a huge screen, wow, it feels like they're with each other. Um, I think that the, making a connection with technology would be huge. Uh, this is when technology really is uh, positive in our lives, isn't it? Um, and I think that... Um, you know, perhaps making cards and sending, taking a picture and sending that to the other child saying, you know, I want to send my friend a, a something. I want to send them a gift. Well, what could we send them? Well, we could make them a picture and we could send them that gift. We could put a play on. We could send a video of a greeting via email. I think that 
these are all ideas that you could employ in order to um, make that connection for your children. Okay. So another one that we have here um, is how can I keep my four-year-old occupied when both her and her husband are working full-time, they're on conference calls, and they feel like their child spends four to five hours on a tablet? On a tablet. It's hard. So I think one, first of all, in these times, we need to, we need to um, first give ourselves permission uh, to understand we're coping. So whoever sent that question in, um, and kudos for you for noticing, uh, great for you for asking that question. Um, I salute you for, for your concern. I know that many of us are, are going to use television. Um, try your best to have programming that is um, informative. Try your best to find television that is um, inspiring for your child. I think that those would all be good qualities for the programming that your child's watching. And then where possible, perhaps maybe making that quiet corner where she could go into a fort and read books, um, getting up in the morning, if she could have some provocations, and by that I mean some learning opportunities set up for her, maybe um, some loose parts created for her where she could play beside you while you're working. Um, and, and honestly, those loose parts will really help keep her busy. Mm -hmm. I hope those questions help, but if you want more, uh, please don't hesitate to email us again and, and, and I can go into more detail. I hope those few helped. Um, so another one is, and a lot of them are asking similar questions like this, is um, how to get back into a routine because they feel like they're not in a routine. So. Well, guess who is coming uh, on one of our future webinars? I, and I'll talk a little bit about, but um, uh, um, Easy Daisy, which is a product that is, Absolutely amazing. Elaine is going to be joining us um, on a future webinar, and she's going to be talking to us about routine, how to get your family organized, how to be working in this chaotic situation we find ourselves in. She has the most amazing skills. She was on Shark Tank, I don't know, a number of years ago, and they loved her. Her product is absolutely phenomenal, and, and as a person, she is outstanding. It, it, qualities in her are just admirable. So I am really looking forward to her having her as a guest. So as I said, um, uh, Elaine is coming from Easy Daisy and um, we're having the, our chalkboard publishers come. So those are our next two webinars. We're just trying to figure out which one's uh, coming first. Okay, so, so for tonight okay. and about routine, I think you need to think about uh, what is important. Uh, you need to write it down. And if your children are are you know over the age of four they need to be considered you need to talk to them about the routine when you get buy-in from your children you get cooperation when you try and dictate what is important to them it is a problem so think about what are the jobs that need to be done in the house record them down make a list ask for their contributions and then what you could do is to um, then say okay so what is important you could rank them one to four you could rank them important not important they could each tell you so they're all going to tell you taking out the garbage is unimportant <laughs> then you can talk to them about the realities of life that why it becomes important and then it gets moved over to that column but involve your children in the routine remember if it's not working sit down as a family and talk about it talk about that it's not working and how together we can solve this problem. I think you'd be surprised when you open up conversation how amiable and cooperative your family will be. Okay, do you want to, we'll have time for one more or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So um, do you have suggestions to help balance everything? Single mom working full time while trying to stay on top of all the worksheets that are being sent home and just staying on top of normal everyday life and coping with what's happening. I think first of all, and, and, and as I've said this before, big breath. Yeah. And understand it's not going to be perfect. Yep. You just got to, you just got to know it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And that really the most important thing is not getting those worksheets done. It's your children's social, emotional well-being right now. Are you making time to contact her friends? Is she able to go walk by her friend's house and leave a message? out you know are you finding time to go on zoom so that the two of them can talk 
the worksheets will come. I'm sure your that your child is very bright and that, you know, try the loose parts out for them, give them those activities. They're going to be discovering things that are on no worksheet, trust me. Okay, perfect. So do you wanna keep answering some or? Uh, well, it's it's 901 and I think that um, we have a whole team of people who are on with us and, and, and um, so I do wanna respect their time as well. And we can go through them. Uh, and please, um, you know, uh, you can email us at sales at uh, scholarschoice.ca uh, or customer service at scholarschoice.ca. You can, um, and then you could just say send this to Julie. I'd be happy to answer any other questions at all. Um, you can reach out to Emily on uh, social media. She's on LinkedIn, she's on Facebook and very active and there's so much out there for you. And if you missed it, if I didn't publish it long enough, I'm sure that um, Em can redirect you and uh, it'll be amazing. You'll be so, she's such a great resource, just amazing resource. So thank you very much, be safe. Um, know that we're here for you and that, um, you know, at Scholar's Choice, you're our purpose. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a lovely evening. Be safe, everyone. Good night. Thanks. Good night, Meeks. Thanks. Good night.